Hey guys, Fred here at Math and Engineering. How's it going? We are going to talk a little bit today about sketching and transforming functions, okay? So we're going to discuss, and this is probably one of the first topics that we're going to see in Calculus 1, and essentially what it is, is we're going to start with some base function. We're going to be given some base function, so something like, you know, root x, sine x, and that sine x will have different uh, different numbers attached to it, so it'll be like 2 sine x minus 5, or you know, square root of sine x, and then inside the argument there might be, um, you know, two different terms, and we're going to have to be able to sketch that without our graphing calculator, okay? And that is going to be one of the first topics, like I said, that we come up uh, against in Calc 1, and it, it's good to be familiar with this because it does give you a, a deeper understanding of different functions and what they look like. So. With that being said, let's take a look at, I've, I've written down six rules, I have another page that I'm going to bring in here, and we're just going to look at all of the rules and what they do to the function, and we're going to, I'm just on the right here, going to sketch you a little example of what happens when we apply uh, different kind of uh, transformations to different types of functions, okay? And hopefully that helps you a little bit with your understanding. So. With that being said, let's let's take a look at number one, okay? And, and for all of these questions, we're assuming c is greater than one, so c isn't, you know, a very, very small number, so, you know, it doesn't become infinity or something like that here. So let's take a look at number one. So we have y equals c, where c is just a constant here, guys. Don't get confused with c. c is just a number greater than one. It could be anything, okay? So if we have a, a constant times the entire function, okay, like right here, we're going to take f of x, the graph of f of x, and we're going to stretch it vertically, okay, by a factor of c. So what does that mean vertically? Well, let me just uh, show you. So for, for example, say we have y equals x squared, okay? If we have y equals x squared, which is going to look like this, okay? So on the left here, I have uh, just what the function looks like, and then on the right, I have what it would look like after we apply this transformation. So we have x squared here. So by stretching vertically, okay, we, it's going to look a little bit like this, okay? So it's going to get squished a little bit, all right? Uh, it's it's going to look thinner, all right? If that's, if that's a better way for you to kind of remember it, it it's going to be squished horizontally. So it's going to be stretched vertically, all right? So let's go to the second one. Uh, we have 1 over c times f of x, okay? So now we're multiplying the function by... Um, by a smaller number. So for, for example, in the first one, if you just take a look at it logically, we multiplied the function by, and the function became bigger, right? So the numbers in y are going up faster, which is why this, the function is shrinking this way. Now, we're multiplying the function by a small number, right? One over something. So f of x is getting smaller, so y is getting smaller. So what's gonna happen? Well, it's gonna be the opposite of this, right? So let's use x squared again as our example. We're going to have x squared here, okay? What's gonna happen is this function is gonna stretch out this way. So that's, that's maybe a good way if, if you're having trouble remembering this. Uh, if, you know, if you're not sure, just plug in a number. Plug in, plug in numbers. And, uh, and plot a couple points so you can remember it, all right? So let's go to number three. We have y equals f uh, of c of x, okay? So what that means is that now that constant isn't multiplied by the entire function, but it's actually inside the argument, okay? And we're gonna shrink the graph of y equals f of x horizontally by a factor of c. So we can illustrate this a little more by using, so for this one, we're just gonna use sine x. And let's just say that this one is sine 2x, okay? So instead of the constant being on the outside, it's on the inside, right? So sine, if we know, usually looks just like this, right? So we have, okay, we have something like that, right? So if we apply this transformation here, we're gonna get a sine graph that looks kind of like this, okay? So it's, it's being compressed similar to this one. It's being compressed horizontally. So, if we look at number four, we have, well, pretty much the same thing as two, but now the uh, constant c is being divided by, you know, the in inner part of the function, right? And I've just gone ahead and I've written down, uh, we're gonna use cos for this one, just so you can see, and we have y equals f of x over c, okay? So that c is being divided by the inner argument of the function. So that's a little bit different than this one here, and you'll see why. 
So, you know, for a normal cos function, we have something that looks like this, right? All right. And what's going to happen is it's a little hard to draw here, but it's going to be it's going to be stretched out. Okay? So it's going to it's going to look like something like that, all right? So it's it's similar to this one is the cos function is going to be stretched this way, all right? So let's move on to the last two rules in this section. I hope those uh, were clear for you guys. So we have y equals negative f of x. Reflect the graph of y equals f of x about the x-axis. So if you're not familiar with even and odd functions at this point, we're going to get into that at the last part of Calculus 1 when we're doing our kind of heavier sketching of, of more complicated functions when we have to find inflection points and maximums and minimums and that kind of stuff. So we'll go into that later for now. And it's honestly, at this point, something you should probably know, but if you don't, don't worry about it. We're gonna go over it in another video. So stay tuned for that. But let's just take a look at these two. So we have y equals negative f of x, okay? And we're gonna reflect it about the x-axis. So this is the x-axis here, all right? And let's do cos, so we have cos x, and then we have negative cos x, okay? And what is going to happen with cos x all right, is we're going to reflect it about the x-axis. So what does that mean? Well, it's just going to be reflected like this, okay? That's it, that's simple as that, all right? Okay, and then we have y equals f of negative x, all right? And this is where that even and odd function thing comes in, okay, because I'm gonna use tan x as a, re as a result of that. So we're gonna do tan x, okay? And tan of negative x. And what that's gonna look like is Okay, we have tan here, all right? And tan of negative x is going to look like this, okay? Because as you can see, if I used cos and I, and I flipped it about the y-axis, okay? It would, it would be the same function. It would look exactly the same and I couldn't show you the difference. But we're gonna get into that later. All, for now, all you need to do is remember these rules, okay? These six rules here that I just showed you. And that's about it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I know that was a quick one. We just wanted to get to the point and show you the rules. In the next video, we're going to do three example problems, and we're going to show you how to apply them. Stay tuned for that.